I've been a graphic designer for over 10 years now and I've changed my portfolio so many times and I wanna share some tips on how to, you can improve your portfolio and land more design work. Now I wanna start off with some of the common graphic design portfolio mistakes that I see a lot of designers make. I've reviewed a lot of portfolios before, but some of the things that I see is that poorly designed work. So the work doesn't look premium, it feels cheap, it looks cheap. And when a client lands on that portfolio, they're not gonna wanna click on it because it just doesn't look the standard. You know, we're so used to seeing like big brands like Apple and Microsoft, they have quality products, they have nice logos, nice, you know, branding, packaging, everything. So someone expects a quality service, they wanna make sure that your work reflects that service. So if it doesn't look good, they probably don't wanna work with you unless it's for an internship or it's free work, then they might give you a chance. The second mistake I see a lot is the visual consistency and appeal of the images. A lot of the times you see designers using a lot of free mockups, which are pretty boring and they're not, they don't look premium. They don't feel, you know, luxurious. They don't feel good. Like it's just cheap and Yes, you might not be able to afford premium mockups, but there's heaps of websites out there. One of them I use is actually Envato Elements. They have a lot of premium mockups and I love using their tool because I can just download unlimited assets, unlimited graphics, unlimited mockups. Literally anything I need is all within one subscription. And if I need fonts, I need some images for a client project or a website, I can literally download any of this stuff. I will put a link in the description below. So definitely check that out. Another big problem I see is that designers including schoolwork or old work that is irrelevant to today. So I don't want to share my work from like 10 years ago because it was pretty bad and you will do a lot of bad work, but you just want to keep creating. The more you create, the more you design, the more you get better naturally. And so try to avoid student projects unless it was a really good one and you're confident in it. If you don't have client work, what you can do is create passion projects, something that you're really interested in. It could be maybe you're a gamer. Why don't you redesign Fortnite's um, website or maybe redesign the logo or something and do a whole case study on it just for fun, like challenge yourself. Maybe you love coffee, create a coffee brand and do some like nice packaging for some beans. Like that would be cool. Or maybe you're into surfing. Like why not um, create like a, some art for like a surfboard, custom um, surfboards or Maybe it's a skate brand. You want to do some clothing. You can do some cool art on some skate decks. You know, there's so many different ideas you can come up with. Just try and align your passions with your design skills and use it as a way to practice. Sometimes designers only show a few images and they don't flesh out the portfolio for a specific project out. They don't have enough images. They don't have text um, showing the context or what role they had on the project. Um, there's no, you know, quotes or testimonials from the clients. So, you know, having a full, fully fleshed out project will show that you're a professional, you're, it's more re real, it's more of like a real project, even though it might be a concept, um, you know, clearly write that it's a concept if it is. Some people wanna see the impact, the results, and the, the details, like people like seeing that because it shows your attention to detail, it shows that you, you know, you're, you pay attention and you're putting the effort and the time into each project. Another mistake I see is that designers rely on social media too much. So you, you rely on Instagram, or you just rely on Dribbble or Behance, and you just have one platform, but there's clients on many platforms. And the thing is the algorithms and the platforms are always changing and you can't really customize your space. And that's why I always recommend having your own website because you can have your own digital real estate. You can customize the website into your style, how you like it. You can, you know, change the images, how you want it to look, the sizing, you know, the spacing, the layout, all that stuff. You have full control over it. And I recommend everyone having that because, you know, it's just fun. It, shows, it can show your web design skills, you can add little animations, make it look professional. And I've always just had a portfolio website. Like I first, my first one was like in WordPress, which was so clunky and slow and hard, but I slogged it out for a few years. And then I eventually went to like Squarespace. Now I use Webflow and Framer. And I think they're really good because you can just plug in play some templates. There's free templates and also paid ones that allows you to just build your portfolio website in like less than a day. And so I, I really recommend those tools. But if you are going to go with the, web, the website route, what I recommend is make sure that you compress all your images, like make it less than one megabyte because the more images you have, it's going to bloat the website because it has to load all the images. And sometimes clients are not on a fast internet. Maybe they're on a Wi-Fi in a, you know, in a coffee shop or something on a laptop. Like you don't know, maybe they're on their phone in some, some place. You're just not sure. So you're going to make sure you're website loads fast and is ready. So those are some of the common mistakes. I'm gonna tell you how to fix them in a little bit, but I'll first wanna show you some 
portfolios that I love and some agencies that I just love their work. I love how they show their work and their portfolio. And I think it'll really help you get some ideas. Don't I don't want you to be overwhelmed. I just want you to get ideas, see how they present and aim for that quality. You know, whether it might take you six months or a year, whatever it is, just keep working towards that. Remotion is a great studio. They've done a lot of different work. So you can see they've done stuff for Firefox, Salesforce, you know, a whole bunch of SaaS apps. They even did some concept for Netflix, which is cool. And a lot of tech stuff. Just, I love how these images you can see are really, they have consistency with their images. You want to have visual consistency. And so you can see how they've got like this tilted effect on these two images. And then these ones are like simple, like dashboards showing the UI and stuff. So for example, if we um, go to Firefox, this one was a really great brand um, identity. So you can see they're breaking down, you know, what problem are they solving? You know, these are the problems. This is our, was our approach. You can see how they broke it down. There's a lot of text. So this is what I'd call like a, a solid case study. A lot of, a lot of text, a lot of detail, um, animations, little reels, how they came up with the concept, showing some sketches, some of the ideation process. Like this is a really cool shot as well, like that. So there's a full process. So you can check them out, um, remotion.com and how they came up with the Firefox logo. It looks beautiful. Beautiful animations. It's just a very great way of showing off a brand. So that's a great example. One of my friends from Blue Cyclops, Rocky Rock runs this studio. I think he's got around five people working for him. He's got a lot of great work. Uh, I'm gonna click on work and show you some of his projects. He's got a lot of cool projects here that he's um, been working on. You know, one of my favorite ones is Leaping Daisy was a cool one. Leans more towards illustration and he loves graphic design and identity stuff. So. You can see he's got this amazing animation and I think that the image is behind is like an AI background, but that's fine. And then once you go through, you can see like, okay, it's got the title of the project, you got the header image, then you've got like the industry services, they did the team, and then you got introduction. You can expand this. So sometimes people don't want to read text. You know, sometimes it's better to have short text, keep it just simple headlines to scan through and just show the work straight away. Like some, I think that's a good way. But it's just good in case someone wants to read all this, they can. But straight into the image, you can see beautiful mock-ups. Showing social media, showing it, you know, on a on a car. Um, animated, what you can see like a, a little reel showing quickly all the work. So you're seeing, I'm seeing a lot of different skills here, you know. Graphic design, packaging, print stuff, web design. They did the website, looks amazing. And... See how the layout, they did like this bento style, which is very popular these days. I think that's a great way to show a lot of work in a quick like shot. But the colors work well, the fonts work well. Just It's just beautiful. So here's another example of how you can show your work in a nice bento format and with a nice header, a little animation going on. Another great studio that I love is hoodspardesign.com. Once again, we get this big header. They're using an animation. It just sets up the project really nicely. Like you... The first thing you see is like, boom, it looks amazing, right? I'm going to scroll through here. You have the headline, then you've got some of the context. And then once again, what was the scope? What things they did? Um, they gave some credits, which is always great. Like always state if it's a, a fake concept, like if it's a concept project that you came up with, who you collaborated with, or is it like a web designer, developer, or illustrator? Uh, always give credit where credit's due. Don't just claim it all for yourself because that's just selfish and not right. Scroll through, we have a little bit of a mood board. So this is really nice, little collage. Some of the inspiration, where they got it from. Back to the Future, I got Yoda, Jurassic Park, lots of classic ones. Um, the culture, number one, two, three. So these are sort of like their culture or their brand values, the internal values. Innovative story trailers, magic makers, trusted collaborators like that. Logo history. So this one was like a rebrand. It wasn't a new project. It was like they're rebranding an old logo. As you can see, the dates, I like this. And then they come up with this. I think this logo is um, awesome. Like just super clean, nice icon. Topography is amazing. So they're showing the process, the responsive logo now, what it looks like, the custom word mark. So this is a great way of doing a case study, showing the portfolio, doing a bit of information. You know, you can always put like one or two lines. It doesn't have to have a lot of text. Just don't overwhelm yourself. Um, don't try and use ChatGPT and make up some text. Just try and think on yourself and see how you can add a bit of context. 
you got all the logos. They did a lot of work for them, which is really cool. The color palette. Love how they show it like this. That's nice. Business cards. The layouts. Beautiful. So think of ways you can show the project in many different formats. The mock-ups are amazing. It's visually appealing. You know, it's just like it stands out. It stands out like professional work. And so try and think of ideas like that. Another great one I love is Creative Mints. This guy is a single freelancer. He's from Czech Republic, which is cool. Now look at his images. There's a coherency, a consistency of the images. Very like techy, 3D, colorful, bold colors, very vibrant. Lots of like patterns and shapes. And I really just love his 3D style that he uses. For example, if I click on this, got animating UI. It's like a simple video here. So it's nice to like show a, a reel. It's a quick way to show like work without someone having to scroll all the way through it. And then you can see he, he does like a UI, like the breakdown of the frame, uh, the wireframe. And then he like goes into the design as you can see. So this one's a bit more simplistic. The main thing I want you to focus on is like, look at the views and you know, just look at the images. like. He really focuses and hones in on that one homepage image that just stands out and blows you away. Like, whoa, this is cool. Like, what's this? Right? So try and think of like cool mock-ups. Can you use 3D? Can you use, you know, a nice um, layout or, you know, angle or something? Think of ways you can be creative with that. Another one of my friends, uh, Perius uh, Dash Design. He's a solo designer. He's got a lot of beautiful work as well. As you can see, a whole bunch of fun stuff. We'll go on this one here, Jungle Dating. You can see the scope, the overview, simple title. And then you got text and then straight into an image, like a bento style a grid, just two column grid really. Social media images, business cards, mock-up of like a website, some Instagram story templates, colors. Like this is very durable. Like this is something you can do, very simple. Very like light images, very minimal, nothing too crazy. And then you can go to the next, the next one, and boom, straight away it loads very fast. I can scroll through, nice mockups. That's dope. Look at that. And this is another great way to show your portfolio. Glitchka Studios. I've been following him for many, many years. I love his just very practical, down to earth, and straightforward approach to like logo design, identities, and stuff like that. And so, um, he's how he shows. It. He just yeah client, director, project, and then straight into the logo designs. You see this? He's, a, he's, logo, he's a, one of the top logo designers you can find in the world. He just knows what he's doing. Great mock-ups on a white background. Just simple. It's very simple. Just showing all the work as you scroll through. Patterns. How it uses some imagery. And then uh, they had oh, a secondary brand. That's cool. Did uh, some packaging design for this one. Bullseye barbecue sauce. Just strong, bold mockups, and then just showing different parts of the brand identity. So this one's a bit more pulled back, like less images, but still high quality. I hope you get some ideas from those portfolio pieces. Now, here are how you can fix some of those mistakes I said before. Focus your energy on doing the best work you can. Like, if you suck at logos, try and work on that. If you are bad with doing colors or doing web design, focus on that skill. Like work on the skills that you lack and focus on building those up with concept projects, with fake projects. You can go on ChatGPT and generate a brief. There's something called Briefbox as well. That's a great website to use to generate briefs for you if you can't if you don't have clients right now. Find ways to develop projects, upload your portfolio and constantly share portfolio pieces. Share your design work, the images, the mock-ups on you know, social media, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Pick a couple of those app, um, platforms and, and just post as much as you can, at least a couple times a week and get into the habit of it. And don't be scared. Don't fear that if my work's bad or not, just post. Don't worry about perfection. We all started at a low level of design. So, you know, you just got to face it and just keep doing it and you'll get used to it. Once you've done your best work, what you want to do is focus on crafting visual images. So try and find the best mockups. If you can invest in mockups, definitely check them out. As I said, Envato is great because they have a whole bunch of premium mock-ups, images, everything you need for one affordable price of $16.50 a month if you do the annual plan, which I think is very generous. And so you can check it out. The link will be in the description. But I just, just make sure that it's visually beautiful and bold and just exciting to look at. Next would be work on passion pro projects, things that you're really, really passionate about. 
things that interest you, things that excite you, and put that energy and challenge yourself. Say, I'm gonna do a um, an identity project with a logo packaging, and I'll do it in two weeks. And time yourself and like put a date and just do it, and make sure you complete it, and then upload that a case study or in the project onto your own website and just share it as much as you can and it'll help you get more leads, more inquiries. If you use something like Framer or Webflow, I think they're, they're the best apps for building websites these days and just use a template, save your time, use a template and create your portfolio within a couple of days and just get it out there because you want to be able to share your link to potential leads and clients and friends and family uh, as quick as possible. So do that and you won't regret it. My next tip would be only show your best work Avoid showing old work that's outdated or irrelevant work, like industries you don't want to work in. Like you don't want to show far farming work and to get more farm work, or you don't want to show maybe you're not you're not into tech and you're into more food and retail. Then show restaurant branding and, and coffee shop branding and stuff like that. So show only the work you want to get more of. Okay, because if you show other work, you'll get inquiries for other random industries that you probably don't want. But look, when you're starting out, if you need the money, hey just do it like build your your reputation build your portfolio up because sometimes early on you have to do that and i had to do that i had to work with all kinds of different brands and now i, I can be more selective because i have leverage because i have reputation built next would be make your portfolio easy to find so as i said have a quick link and use a text expander i use text blaze i can easily just send a link to people on linkedin or instagram um with my keyboard shortcut so it makes it super easy to do that and yeah make sure that it loads fast on your web page Make sure that it's just easy to look, see your work. And then lastly, make sure you have all the key details and add more context to the project. Don't just chuck images. Make sure there's context, a bit of text. Explain your thinking. Explain what the project is about and the results and etc. Because it just adds that extra layer of detail. It shows you can actually think for yourself. shows that you can actually put effort into it. So hopefully you get some ideas on improving your portfolio. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you do want to see more of my graphic design portfolio, you can check this video here where I show my senior graphic design portfolio.